Welcome back to another episode. You know, I really enjoy reading and answering all of you guys' comments. It's part of the reason why I do this show, to have some sort of interaction with you guys. And some of you guys even give me suggestions for videos that I should do, topics that I should talk about. And for those that have done that, thank you so much for doing that. I just wanna let you know that even though I don't necessarily make a video out of it then, I do write everything down and I keep everything in mind and I actually do a lot of research on the topics that you guys suggest me. But two weeks ago, somebody suggested a story that seemed really interesting to me. So I Googled it, did some research, and eventually decided that, you know what, I'm gonna make a video out of this story. So for this week's episode, we're doing the story of Ferdinand Magellan. I hope that I spelled that right, as suggested by Philip Javanowski. Philip, thank you for the suggestion. If you're new here, I'm Darius Kozlin, this is Vlogs of Knowledge, and it is cool absolutely every single week. If you're not subscribed here, well, what are you doing? Because we have a brand new episode about history every single week. Make sure to subscribe, make sure to hit the notification bell so you don't miss any videos and you get them as soon as they come out. And of course, you will be joining Team Knowledge. So with that being said, well, let's get to it. This week's story is a very interesting one. It's interesting because it's about a man who was almost the first man to circumvent the entire globe. And I say almost because unfortunately he died a few months before he could complete his journey. Even though he wasn't successful in completing his journey, his story is still worth mentioning because of the huge impact that it had on Europe and arguably the entire world. Like it really did change the way that Europe saw the world and the globe and how Earth actually was. The man of our story, Ferdinand and his crew unknowingly took on what was to become the longest voyage of their lives. It was so long that 80% of the people that went with them at the beginning never made it till the end. But as always, let's put all this in a historical context and get some background. Ferdinand was born in Portugal in the late 15th century and at the time in the world, spices were the big thing to have. Like it was the commodity that pretty much everybody wanted to get their hands on. And just like today, oil, you have people fighting wars over it. In the 15th century, people were fighting battles over spice. Unfortunately for the Europeans, good spices that have that strong taste are really hard to grow in colder climates. As a result, the spices that were growing in Europe weren't really that strong to the taste. That's because Europe has a very temperate climate with a lot of water. So the spices never actually have to fight for their lives. So they never develop that really strong taste that everybody else was after. Usually the harsher the climate condition, the harder the spice has to fight for its life, the stronger chemicals that it produces and the stronger taste that it has. And everybody loves spices with strong taste. And really these types of spices could only be found in hotter and drier areas. So for example, in Asia, you had a lot of these spices that the Europeans wanted. And especially with the age of discovery and Christopher Columbus's explorations, people were hopeful that maybe there's a different way to go to Asia that's faster that could get us more profit. Like that's what they wanted. And keep in mind that at the time, the world hadn't been fully mapped out. Like they had absolutely no idea what was beyond the American continent. In fact, the American continent had just been discovered a few years before that. So they had absolutely no idea. Maybe Asia was just around the corner. They had no idea. And that's when Ferdinand comes into our story. Having been a sailor all of his life, he was perfectly equipped to be the one to take such a big risk, undertake such a big trip, and maybe hopefully try to find a faster route to Asia. The only problem with that is that, well, like I said, nobody knew exactly what to expect. Nobody knew what was beyond the American continent. Nobody wanted to take such a big risk for something that may or may not happen, right? Like there could be a trade route to Asia, just like there could not be a trade route to Asia. Nobody wanted to take the risk. Ferdinand went to Portugal to ask for sponsorship. They denied him, and in an act of revenge, he ran announced his Portuguese nationality and went straight for Spain in hopes of maybe finding a sponsor there that could sponsor his trip. In Spain, he was lucky enough to get in contact with some key people that eventually led him to the King Charles I where he could propose his plan to try to find a faster route to Asia. The king accepted and Ferdinand was officially granted the right to sail westward in hopes of maybe finding Asia, maybe bringing a lot of riches to Spain. And if we're really being honest, there was a lot of wealth and a lot to gain for Ferdinand if he could actually find a trade route to Asia because really that would make Spain very rich. They would get access to the spices that everybody wanted. And if Spain was rich, they would have no problem to pay a finder's fee to Ferdinand for having found the route. Like it was really a win-win situation. In September 1519, Ferdinand, his crew and five ships all left the coast of Spain to begin their long and difficult journey. Little did they know that only one ship would survive and that this journey would take them over three years to complete. After about a month of sailing, they eventually reached the coast of South America. And even though this was the easiest leg on their journey, already they were starting to see signs that the journey was going to be troublesome. So for example, when they were sailing up the coast of South America on Easter day in 1520, one of the ships decided to rebel and not follow orders from Ferdinand anymore. They were fed up and they said, you know what, we're not going to follow you, we're going to do our own thing and that'll be that. Ferdinand, trying to restore back authority to his command, he executed the captain and even left another captain behind in South America. He basically wanted to send the message that you don't mess with me, like if you mess with me, I'm either going to kill you or leave you behind in South America and you don't really want to be left behind in South America. 
And at the same time, he had sent another ship ahead just to see what was coming up so that they knew sort of what to expect. Unfortunately, that ship ended up being shipwrecked. Like, things were not looking too good. They stayed for quite a while in South America because it was storm season and they didn't want to risk any one of their ships getting shipwrecked, especially not after having just lost one ship so recently. After about five months of staying in South America, they eventually reached a passage through Chile that would eventually lead them to the Pacific Ocean, their ultimate goal and what they were ultimately after, the other side of the American continent. The trip on that passage was very rough, very difficult, and also very cold. Like the crew members, they were agitated, they were angry, they were unsatisfied with the journey, they were losing hope that they were ever gonna reach Asia, and they were losing trust in Ferdinand. In fact, one of the ships decided to completely abandon the journey because they saw no hope in ever reaching Asia, and they returned back to Spain. So at this point in our story, there are only three ships left out of the original five. After the long, difficult journey through that passage, they eventually reached the Pacific Ocean, which they were actually the first ones to name the Pacific Ocean because of its relative peacefulness compared to the rough waters that they had just been through. From the perspective of Europe, they were the first ones to come in contact with this ocean, so they had absolutely every right to name it how they wanted to name it. So they named it the Pacific Ocean, and that, guys, is why the Pacific Ocean is called the Pacific Ocean. Now, Ferdinand, he really, and I mean really underestimated the size of this ocean. Like, he told his crew members with blazing confidence that they would cross it in just a matter of only a few days. Like, a few days to cross the Pacific Ocean. Like, we all know that's never gonna happen. The journey, instead of taking them three days, it took them three months to complete. Like, they were starving, they barely had any food left, and of course, a lot and a lot of the crew members died. After three months of unexpected sailing with barely any food left, like it's a surprise that they even had food left, they eventually reached the island of Guam where they were finally able to replenish their food stock and maybe have a hope of completing their journey. From Guam, they traveled to the Philippines because it was relatively close and there they got involved with the local tribes. Ferdinand, in a random act of religiousness, he began to convert these Filipinos to Christianity because hey, they're not Christian, we're Christian, this is a perfect opportunity for us to convert them, right? Like, why not? In the process, he became friends with the leader of the tribe and he was now that much closer to completing his ultimate end goal of reaching the Spice Islands of Asia. Unfortunately, that's where Ferdinand's story ends. He became involved in a local civil war when the leader of the tribe asked personally for his help. He decided to help them in battle against all recommendations. He even led the armies in battle. He was killed in battle and that was the end of Ferdinand. It might have been the end of Ferdinand, but not the end of the voyage. They had lost another ship, so there was only two ships left and they had two choices, either go all the way back to Spain through the Pacific Ocean, make that whole journey again, or keep pushing on and hope that maybe one day you'll reach Asia and you'll finally get the spices back to Spain. They decided to keep pushing on because they had come so far, there was no way they were gonna give up after having made such a big journey, and they eventually reached the Spice Islands of Asia. At that point, only one ship was fit for sailing, and that ship completed the last leg of the journey and made it all the way back to Spain in 1522. That's three years after the initial departure. Three years, this whole journey took them three years, like it was unexpected, and it was really a big journey. Out of the 270 men that were there at the beginning of the trip, only 18 made it back to Spain three years later. And although Ferdinand is not the first one to circumvent the entire globe, that honor has to go to one of his slaves who was aboard his ship during the entire voyage. Seeking riches and personal glory, Ferdinand's trip brought so much more to Spain than just its spices. Like it really advanced the way that Europeans saw the world and it showed them for the first time ever just how big the globe was. Because guys, the globe, although it may not seem like it, like the globe is really, really big. And he also proved that the earth wasn't flat, and although people of the time didn't really believe that the earth was flat, there were still some doubts here and there that he was able to put to rest because he had successfully, well not him but his slave, circumvented the entire globe. And as for the trade route that everybody was looking after, well they realized that it was too long to cross the Pacific, it was way too inefficient, so they just remained with what they already had. Nonetheless, Ferdinand accomplished a lot during his travels. Unlike Columbus, who likes to kill tribes, he likes to start international slave trades that end up selling about like 12 million slaves in 400 years, like Columbus was pretty bad. So there you have it, the story of the man who almost circumvented the entire globe. I really hope that you've enjoyed this episode, and if you did, please leave it a big thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any future videos. And now it's time for questions. Would you have done such a big trip if you had the chance? And what was your biggest trip in your life? How was it? Please do leave me a comment. I would love to read and answer them all. And bonus points for you. If you do leave a comment, you might get featured next week's video as a fan of the week. So it's a win-win for everybody. As you know, and as I say at the end of every video, I haven't talked about everything and the things that I did talk about, well, I haven't gone into too much detail. That's okay. I'm actually doing this on purpose because I want you guys to go out and research on your own and maybe learn a thing or two. With that being said, my name has been Darius Kazin. You can follow me on social media. The links will be in the description. It's been an absolute pleasure and I will see you all next week.